In this segment, I want to talk about thermodynamic work. Now, to be clear, there's only one work. Work is still a force applied through a distance. It is still the way that we move energy into or out of a system via pushes or pulls. In other words, it is still how we use forces to add energy to or take energy away from a system. So what I mean when I say thermodynamic work, I mean using work to change the thermodynamic properties of a system, or going the other way, using the thermodynamic properties of a system to do some work. Check out this video of work being done on a gas. You'll see that it does change the thermodynamic properties of the system. What this person has here is a, uh, it's a cylinder, and inside uh, this woman has placed a little bit of cotton, just a little tiny, tiny bit of cotton down here in the bottom right here. And uh, she's about to apply a force to this piston right here, which is going to um, compress the gas inside the cylinder. Let's see what happens. Press down quickly to increase the air pressure. So the woman did work on the gas inside the piston, which caused its thermal energy to increase. We can think about this in the context of the first law of thermodynamics. Recall that the therm first law of thermodynamics is delta E thermal equals Q plus W. In other words, how can we change the energy of the system? Well, we can add heat or we can do work on it. Well, what happened here? Did I add heat? Hmm, not really. This happens so fast that there's not really time for heat to move into or out of the system. So this is really zero. In other words, it is an adiabatic process. Therefore, the work I did went directly into changing the thermal energy of the gas. And that cotton catching on fire just provides a nice visual clue that indeed the thermal energy has changed. Now we have to be a little bit careful because remember I told you we have to watch out for our sign conventions when using this. This is the work on a gas, right? I did work on the gas which caused its temperature to increase. That fire piston demo, it's very similar to what happens in a diesel engine. In a gas engine, in an automobile, uh, inside your piston, gas and air is mixed, and then the cylinder compresses that gas and air until the temperature gets really high. And then your spark plug gives off a little spark, whoo, ignites it, it explodes, causing the piston to go up and generating, you know, doing work in order to move your car down the road. In a diesel engine, it has a higher compression ratio. In other words, the, 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 the ratio of the original volume of the cylinder to the final volume of the cylinder is much greater. And so it compresses the gas and, and air mixture much greater. In fact, it compresses it so much that the diesel ignites on its own. The, so a diesel engine doesn't require a spark. So what we saw in that fire piston that's very similar to what happens in a diesel engine. Now in that case, the gas explodes and Initially, we did work on the gas in order to compress it, but now that fuel and air mixture explodes and the piston then, that, that, those hot gases then exert a force on the piston doing work on the piston. So in the first part of the cycle, we do work on the gas to compress it, but then after the explosion, the gas does work on the piston in order to make your car go somewhere. So we're gonna change our thinking here from work on the gas to work by the gas. So when a gas expands, it does work. And when a gas is compressed, work is done on it. And so here we see um, <clears throat> an isobaric process. The area under the graph is P delta V, and that is the work done by the gas as it expands from VI to VF. In general, this is a general statement that the work done by the gas is always the area under the curve. Those of you that have had calculus will recognize this as an integral. Now, I won't give you any really hard shapes that you would have to use calculus on, but I could give you fairly simple shapes like triangles or, or, or squares, right? Either way, the work done by the gas is the area under the curve, as shown here. This changes the thermal energy of the gas. So, when I do work on the gas, I move from a lower isotherm to a higher isotherm. The temperature goes up. So, in terms of equations, the work done by a gas is P times delta V. So, it's a pressure times a change in 
volume. And note this, that the work done by the gas is the opposite of the work done on the gas. Now, that always trips students up a little bit um, when, I, when I write it like that. But it's actually something you've already learned. If we think about an, an event with, with, you know, from, from, say, a few chapters ago. Here's an event. I'm going to lift this baseball up. Did I do work on the baseball? You bet. I sure did. Uh, I did work on the baseball. The, first, the force that I exerted on the baseball was in this direction. And the displacement that the baseball went through was in this direction. Right? So displacement, force, both in the same direction. I did positive work on the baseball. Did the baseball do work on me? You bet. The baseball is exerting a force on me, right? The baseball is exerting a force downward on me. So when I do the same motion, the baseball has a force downward on me, but the displacement is upward. Therefore, the work done by the baseball on me is negative. The work done by me on the baseball is positive. But the negative and positive, right, it just means work moving into or out of the system, right? So I am adding energy to the baseball system, but the baseball system is taking energy away from the Ansel system. Okay. So we can write the thermo first law of thermodynamics like this. Watch out for this representation. Not every source, the internet or otherwise, is going to be so careful about their subscripts. So if we say W gas, that is a work done, that is work done by a gas. Let's do a quick example. How much work is done by the gas in the process shown in the figure? Okay, so first off, we're supposed to ask, we're supposed to answer how much work is done by the gas. So in this case, we are looking for W gas, which is P delta V. Now, if we want to get out joules, then we need to put in standard units. And so we better put pressure in pascals and volume in meters cubed. So recall that one atmosphere of pressure is 101,300 pascals. So my pressure is two atmospheres. So that is simply two times 101,300 pascals. Now I need to multiply by the change in volume. Of course, change in anything is final minus initial. So my final volume is 100, 100 what? Centimeters cubed. I need to get that into meters cubed so that I'll get joules out for my answer. There are 10 to the negative sixth meters cubed in a centimeter cubed, or it makes more sense to say 10 to the sixth centimeters cubed in a meter cubed. So I will just write this as 10 to the negative sixth meters cubed, and then we have to subtract the initial, which was 300. And I'll just do a new line here. Okay, so there we go, and I run my calculator. Let's see what I get. Negative 40.5 joules. Okay, so that is the work done by the gas. How much work is done on the gas? Well, it's just the opposite. Okay, yeah, we can almost think of this uh, business. It's almost like Newton's third law, isn't it? And if I push on you, you push on me. If I do work on you, you do negative work on me. Okay, so here we see a cyclic process, right? How much work is done by the gas in the process shown in the figure? So here we see this gas, you know, it starts out at some point here, and then we see a constant volume increase in pressure. Maybe there's heat added. Um, and then we see a constant pressure expansion in this second run, and then we see a constant volume decrease in pressure, and then finally back to where we started. And the arrows indicate the direction. Now, how much work is done? Well, we could do this the long way, um, starting here. And we could calculate this in four different pieces. Um, here's a quick question. What is the work done as I move from this point right here in the lower left-hand corner to this point right here in the upper left-hand corner? Well, hopefully you agree that the work done there is zero because there's no change in volume. Recall that work is pressure times change in volume. If there's no change in volume, there's no work, which we can think about that in terms of our original definition of work, right? There's no work if there's no distance, right? So a, a work is a force applied through a distance. If there's no distance, there's no work. 
Similarly, when we're talking about thermodynamics, if there's no change in volume, there is no work. So we could do that. And then here we see we would have positive work done here by the gas, no work here, negative work done here. So we could do that in four pieces and add them all together and we would get the right answer. But the work done by a gas in a cyclic process is always the area enclosed by the cycle on a PV diagram. And so all we need to do is find the area of that shape. Now the area of any rectangle is just base times height. So we'll start there. Well, our base is just 2 v naught minus v naught, and our height is just 2 p naught minus p naught, or v naught times p naught, right? Now, in a uh, homework problem or a quiz question, I'd probably give you numbers here, and so you need to run your calculator. But that's the idea. Be sure you check your units. If we're going to expect to get joules out, then we need to put our volume in meters cubed, and we need to put our pressure in pascals. And again, be sure to use the absolute 